Hey, hey, welcome to the Blathering Boomer. You know, as I've said many, many times since 2016, using fascist techniques to fight fascism is fascism. Okay, so you want to call Donald Trump a fascist. Okay, fine. Let's call him a fascist. I disagree, but for the sake of the conversation, let's just say he's a fascist. Do you not see what is happening here? Do you not see the fascist techniques that are, that are being taken to attack Donald Trump? The latest of which is this trumped up charge, and no pun intended, okay, that was bad. But it's a ridiculous charge, this whole Stormy Daniels thing. How many of you really know what's going on with the Stormy Daniels thing? I'm not even going to go into it now. Look it up. I'm not going to do your homework for you. But if you're going around trumpeting, oh, no pun intended, that this man should be taken away in handcuffs and you really don't know much about this case and the complete lack of judicial credibility it has, you really need to stop listening to your friends. And in fact, what I want you to do is stop listening to everybody around you right now and just for the next five or so minutes, listen to me. Yeah, I sound like my Aunt Rini right there when she says, listen to me. But listen to me. So the Biden family, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the overwhelming evidence is the corruption in that family. The, the pay for play influence peddling is off the charts, way beyond what the Clintons even did, which is not easy to do. Trump makes a phone call to Ukraine and looks into it. And by the way, how in the world he knew? Because when he made that phone call, Joe Biden was running a distant fourth in the primaries. Why in the world Trump would risk his political career to investigate a person who's not even going to be his opponent is, is ludicrous. Then again, maybe Trump knew that Biden was going to be his opponent. Not the point. The point is, Trump made a phone call to Ukraine and doing so did exactly what Joe Biden bragged, well, he's accused of doing something Joe Biden bragged about doing when he was the vice president. When Biden demanded a prosecutor who was looking into his son's dirty dealings be fired and threatened to withhold a billion dollars in aid from Ukraine, went on TV and bragged about it. You can look that one up, too. So Trump gets impeached for making that phone call. Sorry, <laughs> do you really think that Trump did something that was actually wrong? Or do you think the powers that be on the, on the Democrat side just wanted him to have an impeachment on his record? This is purely politics, purely kabuki theater. And I lost many friendships over it because I called it as I saw it and not as I didn't give the answer that my friends wanted to hear. I gave the answer of what I really felt. And that's what I'm hoping you're going to start doing now. Because it's time to stop worrying about what your friends are going to think when you say things. And time to start talking truth. Do you not see what's happening here? Do you not see what's happening here? How many of you screamed, oh my god! We can't jail our political opponents when it was Trump going after Hillary. You know, say what you will about Hillary Clinton. If you think it was obscene going after Hillary because she was a political opponent of the power that be, then how could you applaud going after Trump? It's either right to go after our political opponents or it's wrong. It can't be right in some cases and wrong in others. Don't tell me this is different. If anything, this is worse because Trump allegedly paying off a woman to deny an affair he had is not the same thing as having top secret classified information on a private server, which even that is not as bad as taking hammers to your Blackberry using bleach bits to erase your hard drives, and completely obstructing a federal investigation. So if anybody belonged in the slam, it's your queen. And if you think she doesn't belong in the slam, and you think Trump belongs in the slam for doing something so much lesser, if he even did it, you really need to check yourself.
And while I'm talking to you, let's switch to the topic of war. If you think Daniel Ellsberg was a hero, I, I think Daniel Ellsberg was a hero. But you also think Julian Assange belongs in prison? You need to check yourself. And you need to check your sources of information. If you thought the domino theory was bullshit when they told us we have to stay in Vietnam because if we let them win in Vietnam, next thing that's going to happen is Laos will be gone, Cambodia will be gone, Thailand will be gone, Burma will be gone, all of Southeast Asia gone to communism if we stop fighting in Vietnam, a war that we were lied into. And by the way, if, if wars can be started by lies, then they could be stopped by truth. Find out who said that. Look it up. So the current domino theory that if we let Putin have his way with Ukraine, Poland is next, is the same domino theory we heard in the 70s. It doesn't apply. If you think Putin's attack on Ukraine, which, don't get me wrong, I do not believe it's okay to invade a country unprovoked. I actually don't believe it's okay to invade a country, period. So I'm not going to say what Putin did is right. I'm not saying that at all. I'm no Putin apologist, but yeah, we got, we got, to, we got to, truthful statements have to be prefaced with, I'm not, I'm not a Putin apologist, but anyway, that's the times we live in. This attack was not unprovoked. This attack was not unprovoked. I know I had to say that twice. There's a documentary you should watch. If you want to really know what's going on in Ukraine and what's been going on in Ukraine for a very long time, it's called Ukraine on Fire. It was made by Oliver Stone. It was made in 2015, seven years before the invasion, done in the aftermath of everything that happened in 2014. So if you think everything in Ukraine started last year when Putin invaded, you need to watch that documentary. But most of all, when it comes to that documentary, when it comes to Trump, when it comes to who to vote for in elections, when it comes to January 6th, question everything. My friends, I lived in Berkeley. I lived among you guys for 10 years in the 80s. I saw all the question authority bumper stickers. Why did that only apply during the Reagan years? Why aren't we questioning authority now? Why aren't we talking about free speech? Why aren't we talking about men competing in women's sports? Why aren't we protecting women's sports? Boy, I got a scathing email a couple of years ago when Tulsi Gabbard was still in Congress and she introduced the Protecting Women's Sports Act legislation. It's, you know, <laughs> this is before Leah Thomas. Do you really think it's okay to have women's sports be destroyed like that? Talk to me again when an NBA player decides he's a woman and joins the WNBA and watch what happens when that happens. Do you think it's okay for this Leah Thomas to be parading around the women's locker room naked with a bunch of women who are covering themselves up because they're uncomfortable having a biological male in the locker room? Now, I am not transphobic. I have to preface another thing with I'm not transphobic, but because I'm not transphobic. I'm a leftist, an actual leftist, not the neoliberal garbage you see walking around pretending to be leftist and giving leftists a bad name. I'm sick of leftist and progressive being a dirty word because the people who are saying leftists and progressives are dirty words are reacting to these people who are actually neo-fascists against free speech, against free press, and sure, react to them. I react to them too. But not by saying leftism is bad, progressivism is bad, liberalism is bad. Those are all good things. Just you got the wrong people labeling things these days. Anyway, I like to keep these things at 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop now. How much of this is truth? How much of this is blather? That's up to you. The main thing on this is think for yourself, please. It's not too late. Come on, friends. We, we, we all know what we want. We, we want the same things we've always wanted. But partisanship has gotten in the way of principle. I was at the uh, CD release party for a band a couple of weeks ago in Akron. Great band. Um, and when they played one of their songs, the woman who wrote it said, this song is kind of political. She said it almost in an apologetic way. 
And then she sang the song. And it was a beautiful one. And yes, it was very political. But she didn't take sides. She basically said, she, she, attacked, she attacked the culture war itself and didn't take sides in the culture war. There's not enough of this. And if I'm guilty of taking sides, maybe I need to stop too. Because the fact of the matter is, if we don't unite the people who actually want the things we all want, peace and freedom, I mean, clean water, clean air, et cetera, et cetera, but the basic fundamental rights of people to be who they're going to be, something's really changed. And the people who used to be all about that are now promoting jailing journalists. They're about um, bad, bad mouthing the people who expose Twitter. They're about they're about censorship in the press. They're they're mongering for the war in Ukraine. Let's just take a deep breath, take a deep breath, and please just look at things for what they really are, and not for what your friends think they are. And I'm sorry. But a lot of you are not thinking for yourselves. I see your post on Facebook. I see the who can make the most disgusting post about Donald Trump contest in the, in the name of some kind of comedy. Um, my friend Steve is particularly guilty of that. Um, anyway. All right. Well, I'm 11 minutes into a 10 minute video and I have basically fallen into blather. Hopefully I made some points here. The boomer is blathered. Peace out.